Hi everybody, Doug Davis at Cowtown, and this is something everybody's been waiting to see for quite a long time. This is the new Maverick XDS. Uh, it is the turbocharged version of the Maverick XDS series. Um, we've had this in a little while, it's just taken us a little longer to put our video together on it, so we figured we'd do a video and, and kind of show everybody the machine. Now, um, first thing to realize on the new Maverick is uh, we did, they didn't just add a turbo on this machine. There's a lot about this machine that is different. And that's what we're going to try to hit on today here in our videos to talk about what all they did do different. Now, uh, the first thing we'll show you that is different is they did change the tires and wheels, believe it or not. All our Mavericks in the past out of the factory have been a 12-inch wheel with a 27 series tire. They went to a 14-inch wheel this time with a 28 series tire. So bigger tires and wheels, that's on the, all the XDS Mavericks. Also, the brakes. The brakes on the machine are different. Now, in the past, our, um, our Max Series Mavericks had 220 millimeter brakes on the front and two 14s on the back. Now, um, our standard Mavericks have always had two 14s on the front and back. What they did on the turbocharged model is the two 20 millimeter brakes are now on the front. They're a vented dual piston brake. It's not new for Can-Am. Like I said, they've been doing it in the Max or the four-seater version for a while but they put those brakes on the front of the two-person Maverick on, on this particular case. Now it's been a great upgrade because you go faster off the line here, you can stop better with this machine also. A lot more brakes, bigger tires, bigger wheels. All right, now here's something very different on the new Maverick XDS. Uh, it does have different shocks on it. The, the suspension has changed a little bit. Our old model had uh, 14 inches of travel on the front and rear of the machine. The new ones have 15 inches travel on the front and 16 on the back, so we have more suspension travel. This is a Fox, um, a Fox Podium RC2 shock. They do have the bottom out control. Big upgrade in the machine as well. Now another difference in the XDS model is length. Our uh, other machines were 84.3 inches of wheelbase. This one is 88 inches of wheelbase. However, it is tighter, tighter turning than our existing Maverick. So we've got a lot of upgrades here. We've got a bigger, longer machine. We've got bigger tires and wheels. We have bigger shocks. We have more suspension travel. And uh, now we have a 10 gallon fuel tank. So a big upgrade in the fuel tank size. Now the fuel tank size is gonna travel through the whole Maverick family. Um, they're gonna start doing the bigger fuel tanks in all the Mavericks, not just the XDS. Although this is the first one we're seeing a 10 gallon tank in. Okay guys, now we're going to start talking about drivetrain, and drivetrain has definitely changed in this machine. The machine, although it has a new engine with a lot more horsepower, which I'm going to save for last to talk about by the way, it also has a new clutching system. It has a new belt, it's a Xylon coated belt. It has more grip, it is 1.6 times stronger than our existing belt, and it does run cooler because of the Xylon. Uh, it is called a QRS clutching system. It is a much faster engaging clutching system than we've seen in the past. And believe me, I've drove this machine and it needs it. This 121 horsepower is unbelievable when you unleash it. Um, and it does have the QE system, which is not new for Can-Am. Quick engage on the Viscro system. So three tire spins on the front and you're spinning all four on the machine. So it engages very quickly. Guys in the dunes, guys in the mud, they really seem to get used to this. Uh, okay, everybody, now we're getting to the fun part. This right here is our turbocharger and our, what they're calling an intercooler. Now, I'll tell you, my, uh, by trade, I'm a diesel mechanic. I've done it for almost 20 years, and I've been around turbos since the 70s, believe it or not. Uh, turbo adds us a lot of features, especially the way they've done this. I actually call this an air-to-air -air cooler. And it's the same as a modern diesel pickup has or any modern big truck going down the highway. What this does is, this here is a little radiator. There is no water that goes through this, but it strictly pulls air. When the turbo is being spun, it's being spun by exhaust, which heats the air up. Now, on the other side of that turbo, we're intaking air with that. Now, because we're compressing that air, it's also getting hot. Now, everybody knows the cooler the air is, the more air we can put into a cylinder. So, that is what this is specifically for. As it pulls the air coming out of the turbo is very hot. It's acting just like a radiator. 
It's coming in the top, vents through here. There is a fan on the back side of this. It is pulling cool air through this system here, and it's cooling that air coming out of that turbo down. Now by doing that, we're able to get more air in the cylinder than if it was hot. It makes it much more efficient, leans out a lot better, um, and this turbo has a wastegate on it. Now a lot of people I'm sure have heard the term wastegate. Well, what a wastegate actually is is a standard engine that is naturally aspirated or non-blown or non-turbocharged has a certain compression rate. And when you set the compression at whatever it may be, it stays that way as long as the engine is running. Now when we go to forcing air in a cylinder, the compression is variable. When we see the engine idling at one compression, as the turbo spools up and forces air in that cylinder, the compression raises, okay? Now, with the engine at idle speed and you're taking off, what the wastegate is doing, we don't want to throw turbo air into this engine at lower RPMs, at least not all the turbo air, because that will absolutely bog the engine down. Too much air too fast. A wastegate is exactly that. There's a little flapper in there, and as the turbo is spinning, if the engine does not need all the air the turbo is pumping, it is bypassing that air out into the atmosphere, since we call it a waste gate, the wasted air. So as the engine spools up and hits higher RPMs, the compression is climbing, the waste gate is closing, and you're really getting your efficiency on this deal. Now also, We've, uh, this machine, when you're out and out running it, you can flat hear this turbo screaming. It's an amazing feeling. I never imagined we'd be able to hear that turbo, but you can. Most powerful machine we've ever seen. We have, uh, we've done a little drag racing with one of these, and uh, I'm not going to tell you any results, but it is unbelievably impressive. I've never set in a stock UTV that will even come close to this. It is absolutely amazing. But uh, if you get a chance, come down to Cowtown. we got at least one to look at right now. And um, we'll happily show you this and go over these features in person because I've just barely scratched the surface on what this machine will do.